That's to say, presiding over the greatest crisis in American history, preserving the nation, presiding over the emancipating, uh, emancipation of the slaves. Lincoln did not free the slaves with a stroke of his pen, but he set in motion the end of slavery with the Emancipation Proclamation. It's a giant historical process, and it's not just one person, obviously, but Lincoln is key to the ending of slavery. So this is a, the critical turning point in American history, and he presided over it. His successor, Andrew Johnson, who I think has the claim to being the worst president in American history, failed abysmally to confront, so in other words, Confronting a crisis and succeeding is a sign of what, what make you great, you know, and the, whereas confronting a crisis and utterly failing like Johnson is a sign of lack of greatness. But it's also what Lincoln was, not just what he did. As I said, he had these qualities of greatness, which, I, you know, I think are just open-mindedness, willingness to listen to critics, um, willingness to rethink, especially in a crisis, ability to rethink your basic views, and you know, see what's working and see what's not working. This is not the same thing. You know, today, if a politician changes his statement on something, he's a flip flopper, right? That's and many journalists. I'm not putting you in this category. Well, you saw maybe the interview. I, I'm not a big fan of Rand Paul, but you saw the Samantha, uh, what's her name, uh, Guthrie interview with Rand Paul. I thought that was outrageous. She just immediately launched, instead of saying, well, why are you running for president? You know, she launched into the same, well, you said this at this time, and this at this time, and you know, and um, so what? So he said something and he changed his mind. What's the big deal? Do you want someone who is so fixed in his, you know, in his ideas that he can never rethink anything? Is that what we think leadership is? Um, so Lincoln had these qualities, and he also, I don't know how to put this, in a, in a world of deep, deep, deep racism, and Lincoln shared some of those views. There is no question. Lincoln was not Martin Luther King Jr., you know, but he was willing, he was able to, you know, as I said, he met with black people. Frederick Douglass, who came to the White House to criticize him, left saying, you know, I felt no prejudice. He treated me like a man. We discussed things. We didn't agree, but I felt no hostility whatsoever. That may not seem like much, but that was fairly rare in 19th uh, century America. And he also understood the logic of emancipation. That is, even though it came slowly, once you adopt this policy, other things follow. If you're going to put black men in the army, which he did, you've got to make sure they're treated properly. You can't let the enemy capture people and then put them into slavery. You can't let any soul, you know, you've got to protect the rights of your soldiers, black, white, or anyone else. And Lincoln followed through on that. And then finally, at the end, he, you know, in his last speech, he said, these people deserve the right to vote, you know? These soldiers who have fought to save the Union have staked a claim to citizenship in this country. And um, that may not seem like much, but only five states in the North allowed black men to vote at that time. New York didn't, New Jersey, of course, didn't, <laughs> Illinois didn't. Um, so, you know, it, it, as I say, he had this capacity to really is humanize his whole work, you know, so I think it's that he had those qualities which enabled him to be great as well as facing the unparalleled crisis of our, you know, of our history.